Hello and welcome to another edition of the C-Squared Podcast. This is your host, Curtis, and I'm here with my co-host, Gaia. And we are here today with Mr. Josh Toomey of Talk To Me Podcast and NotFest Twitch streams. And he's done a lot of other stuff in the past, played in bands. Uh, he's been around for a while, and uh, he's just an all-around small guy that is returning for the second time with us. So to start off, Josh, just want to say thank you for returning and uh, welcome to the podcast. Hey, always glad to be here, Curtis. Cool. <laughs> Gaia. Hi, um, super excited to talk to you today. Um, I was wondering if you could give us a little like brief um, summary of who you are, what you're about, what's your experience, your whole story. <laughs> oh man, how long do we have? Do we do we have a full hour for this one? Um, no, yeah, not 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 chill. Joshua Toomey, talk to me podcast. Uh, the podcast has been going for about six years now. Uh, a staple on Blabbermouth and Loudwire and uh, the PRP and all the metal sites. Uh, get all the juicy news over there. And then I do Throwback Throwdown on the NotFest Twitch channel. Uh, I played bass in a band called Primer 55 for a while. Uh, and I had a pretty decent sized local band in Nashville where I met a ton of people uh, back in the day. So I guess that's me in a nutshell. Cool. So to start off, so we had you on last time, except last time, I think it was Aaliyah that was with me, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, and now we got Gaia. But um, so, like, basically, for those who don't really know, I just want to just kind of say that, uh, who didn't listen to the last one, rather. So we kind of went over the last time with with Josh about his Twitch channel and that type of thing. But this time, I want to go over, he has a new show, apparently, that's coming up. Uh, Can you kind of go into that briefly, and then I'll ask you some more stuff? Uh, well, it's not necessarily a new show. We're just adding to talk to me. Um, my good friend, uh, Chris Aiken from the classic metal show is going to co-host the intros, outros, and we're going to do, um, let's see how we're going to word this. Uh, so I'll continue to do the interviews because he has his own interview show and does, um, a lot of stuff on his own. And when I, when it came time to find a co-host that I wanted to add more to the show, um, I was like, man, I need to find somebody like Chris. I need to find somebody like Chris. And I was like, wait a minute, why don't I just ask Chris? And uh, Chris immediately said yes. And then uh, basically what we're going to do is, you know, uh, very podcasty, but, you know, talk about the news of the day, uh, talk about the guests I have on the show. Um, we are going to kind of uh, roll a little bit of throwback throwdown into the interviews onto the podcast and kind of get everything under the to me umbrella, but we'll do uh, a throwback throwdown will now be more of a, uh, top five list, top three list or Mount Rushmore of this Mount Rushmore of that. Um, when I had Will Putney on, I did his Mount Rushmore of producers. When I had, uh, Terry Glaze on the, the original vocalist of Pantera, like the eighties Pantera. Uh, I had him pick his top three Pantera records. Uh, so I mean, just kind of getting that. And then, so basically the end of the interview will be a top three, top five Mount Rushmore type thing. It'll roll into Chris and I kind of breaking down our own personal top five, top three list or whatnot. So it's just going to add more to the podcast because I mean, right now the podcast is a lot of just me talking to the guests, which is good. And I mm-hmm. really enjoy it, but I also want a little bit more banter on the podcast also. So was this, if you're allowed to say, and if you're not, just tell me, was this your idea or was this kind of like collaborated with NotFest to kind of do it as a um, collab? I mean, it was mainly my idea. I mean, I've got a lot of, I mean, I'm always thinking of ideas for the show <laughs> and, uh, and, and I've, I've attempted a co-host here and there in the past, but I mean, you know, Curtis knows trying to get co-hosts to work together. I mean, I, I like this. I this is why I have oh, four. I have four. That's co-hosts. what I'm saying. I, I like your yeah. your your plan here. Like whoever's yeah. available, let's just be my co-host for the day. But exactly. uh, but yeah, just just the the one nice thing about doing a solo podcast is if if I need to do it at eight, if I need to do it at nine, if I need to do it at four o'clock in the morning, like I can just hit record and go, and there's no uh, uh you know dynamic of trying to get the other person together. But Chris works from home, so he's he's typically at home, so I think he can. Uh, you can work around my schedule as best as possible, but uh, yeah, go, talking about if it, it was, um, I mean, it was a a subject I brought to Not Fest and said, hey, what do you think about me getting a co-host? Um, kind of adding the the top five, top three list was a little bit more of their idea, uh, mm-hmm. and getting you know because we can put those out on socials and get interactions and all this other stuff. So you know, just kind of playing the game a little bit on that side of it, but uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, 
um, it's funny. I've already announced Chris as my co-host and we're doing the call for him to meet the rest of not fest tomorrow. So, so they technically haven't even met him, but I mean, you know, I have, I like, I think I told you in the last episode, I mean, we've got a lot of freedom over there. Um, yeah. you know, and they, they trust what I'm doing enough to, you know, not micromanage the podcast. You got someone hired without them even meeting them. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. That's trust. <laughs> Um, okay, so since you brought up the topic, you're going to get asked this question. What is Joshua Toomey's Mount Rushmore of three albums? Before we go three to the next album. Um, yeah. Man, I was joking the other day about, uh, you know, everybody posts their Spotify, Spotify, you know, year in reviews or whatever. And, and yep. I'm like, there's no way I'm posting mine. Like there's <laughs> the, the metal guy can't prove how much he listens to like Panic at the Disco. Um mm-hmm. <laughs> The uh, uh, top three albums um, off the top of my head, trying to be mm-hmm. cool, cool metal cred guy, um, Pantera, Great Southern Trend Kill. I will go with, uh, uh, man, trying to pick a Metallica. Um, That's hard. Yeah, I know. I've been listening to a lot of, uh, let's, let's go with uh, Injustice for All for the, for the Metallica and then mm-hmm. we'll go Rust in Peace, Megadeth. I like your style. Gaia, you got to give your Mount Rushmore too since uh, I made Josh, Josh do it. And you I, got, I, I know you're a Canadian because Mount Rushmore has four on it. <laughs> oh, is it four? Oops, okay. <laughs> got to give it fourth. 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 Give it fourth. Um, I'll throw in my email cred and I'll say uh, 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 three cheers for uh, whatever. Three cheers for Sweet Revenge, My Chemical Romance. How about that? Perfect. Okay, guy, you got to do four then, since apparently I don't know Americans, American. Uh, I don't. I don't understand a concept. So, like, you pick any of like the big bands, or no. like whatever. Band you anything like. you want. Your your personal. My four personal. Great albums. Okay, yeah. I think for me it would be Vespertine by uh, Bjork. Yeah. Um, Depeche Mode, uh, Violator. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna go very cheesy with Evanescence, The Open Door. And oh my god, what's the fourth one? You got to do something metal, guy. You can't destroy your total cred here. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't see myself as being metal to begin with. Um, metal, you know what? I'm gonna go metal. Let's do a Nightwish. Um, which one? Wishmaster. Perfect. Cool. Um, I'm not gonna give my four because I'll destroy my cred. No, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. Do yours. <laughs> I did my. You do yours. I'll do four. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, Megadeth's Rust in Peace. I agree with Toomey on that one. Uh, Too Fast for Love by Motley Crue. Uh, number three would probably be Master Puppets by Metallica, obviously. And number four, oh shit. Um, I'm going to say something controversial, and I don't care if people care. Uh, Hollywood or Hollywood by Marilyn Manson, whatever the name is. Hollywood or Hollywood. Those I'm, are my four. I'm surprised there's no Limbiscuit. I like <laughs> Limbiscuit, but I wouldn't put them on my Mount Rushmore. I wouldn't put them on Mount Rushmore. But speaking of Limp Bizkit, since we brought it up, and to me and I talked about this last time, I think, what would you say is the best Limp Bizkit of all time, to me? Uh, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Significant Other. Yeah, same, same, same. Cool. Okay, so now that I've totally derailed the conversation, guy gets to come up with a quick question while I think of what my next question was going to be. What was? You get to do the next question because I just threw oh, myself. I next... When is it coming where... out? Huh? The new, new show. When is it coming out? When, uh, when are- I mean, I've got my my last. Um, actually, I edit this after after we get done with this. Um, my last episode of the year of Talk to Me will be out tomorrow with Brandon Boyd of Incubus. Um, I'm gonna do probably a couple of best of shows to kind of fill out the rest of the year, and then I think it's January sixth, the first Thursday in uh, first Thursday in 2022. Good lord. Why, awesome. why are you, why are you I, taking off so long, dude? What's that? Why are you taking off so long? <laughs> not taking off that long? It's two weeks. Yeah, it's two weeks. It's like a long time. I know. That's why you get a, be- I'm going to do a best of talk to me 2022 uh-huh. and a best of throwback throwdown. That fills out the rest of the year. I I have to say something <laughs> though. I just realized the, the name of the podcast with your last name. <laughs> just <laughs> Oh, like that is very clever. <laughs> Guy just noticed the name. That's hilarious. But it's it actually even not fest. It took them uh, 
like I was sitting there talking to them about some stuff. And then one day the, the my guy over at NotFest texted me and he was like, I just said your podcast name out loud and got it. Like it took him, it, <laughs> it took him saying it out, out, out loud. That's, I got it right away. That's why I was like, what? Okay, cool. Yeah, um, kind of slow. <laughs> what, what is the name of the new show? Anyways, Josh, you didn't mention that. Is it still talking? Yeah, it's, just, it's still going to be talk to me. I mean, we're not changing much. We're just adding a, adding a co-host. So, so it's, it's talk to me and co-host. Right. Talk, <laughs> talk to me featuring me and Chris Aiken. That's hilarious. Okay. Uh, so moving right along with a more serious question since I'm starting to get goofy again. Um, so, okay, let's talk about interviews for a second here. So let's get some, let's get the top tip from Mr. Toomey on how to do interviews since you've interviewed like pretty much everybody under the sun, moon and stars and metal that has a name other than Metallica, I think. Or have you interviewed Metallica? I had Jason Newstead on talking Metallica. So okay, okay, fair enough. So what is your top <laughs> you tip then? Um man, what are my what is my tip? Top, top tip. Top tip. Just top. just I mean, I, I don't ever have questions written out. I always have bullet points, you know, and some mm-hmm. talking points of things that I want to talk to them about. But I mean, just knowing your stuff and uh and and I don't know. I mean, I, I guess it's hard if you weren't in a, in a band and touring a little bit, but just being able to relate a little bit and, mm-hmm. uh, and just show interest in what they're doing. I mean, most, you know, they, they get they get a thousand, uh, you know, the bigger bands get, you know, thousands of interviews all the time. And I'm yeah. sure they're, they're sick of the, OK, on your first album, uh, blah, you know, <laughs> but just have a good time and just have a conversation and, and don't be nervous. Okay, that's kind of a, okay. So, how does one not be nervous? I don't when know. There's, there's, got, there's, got, there's got to be a tip to it. I mean, like, yeah. like, what what would you say would be the way? Man, I, I I guess it's more of that. I've just been doing this so long, and even even before the podcast, you know, growing up as a kid, uh, me and a friend of mine when we were in high school would find where the band was staying find mm-hmm. where the band you know we had our little ins and outs of of um you know if they were playing a certain venue we knew that this was the artist door so we would hang out all day long and and meet bands that way and stuff so i mean i guess i've i've technically been meeting bands and like asking stupid questions for the last you know what 25 years or so so i mean it's um i mean i still get nervous i guess when when like like the jason newstead interview you know it's like Holy shit! I'm going to interview Jason Newstead. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little bit easier because these are all, all on Zoom and, and Streamyard and whatnot, so it's not as daunting as walking into a room with Jason Newstead would probably be. But yeah. uh, but just you know, just just him, even him popping up on the screen, you're just like, wow, that's it's really him. <laughs> and you get to ask you know whatever question you want of the person. What do you think would be? So you think you would have been a little bit nervous with Jason if it would have been in person or you think it would have just been like no biggie? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely would have been nervous in person. Probably probably would have, because I, I feel like when they're popping up on the Zoom, I mean, I'm in my studio. This is my place. When you go to a venue and go backstage to interview somebody or go on someone's bus, you're going into their world. They're not coming into yours. And so, uh, so if I could get Jason into my basement, probably be okay but you know going into um you know, <laughs> going into a venue or whatnot it, it, it's a little bit more uh you know uh daunting of a task i mean i've you know i've done the festival interviews and things like that and, mm-hmm. and uh, definitely done my fair share of in person but they they definitely there's a definite a lot of people like the in-person interviews better for some reason i feel more comfortable i think doing the you know the zoom ones and whatnot yeah, I'm the same way. Uh, Guy, did you have a follow-up question? Yeah, I do have two questions. Okay, first, um, if you could pick any guest that you haven't done yet, uh, who would that be that you really, really want to do an interview with? Um, it's going to be somebody like a, like a Dave Mustaine. I haven't really, I, I've I've had members of Megadeth on, but not Dave or you know the the big guys like James Hetfield and um, I've had Phil and Selma of Pantera on a few times. I, I know Rex Brown's a bit of a, a, a tough interview, but I would like to have him just to kind of complete the set. 
<laughs> on that one. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just somebody like that. Thank you. So, oh, go ahead, guys. Uh, I have another question. Uh, let's yeah. play my favorite. Uh, who was your favorite uh, guest? Uh, favorite guests. I mean, definitely. I mean, Jason Newstead was amazing. Like he, he was, he was engaging, um, you know, had good answers, things like that. Uh, Dave Ellison of Megadeth, formerly of Megadeth. Um, always a great guest to have one. I've inter interviewed him a handful of times. Um, man, I, I, I've really yet to have too many bad interviews, like, and not saying that's anything I'm doing. It's just, you know, um, they seem to all be pretty decent. <laughs> um, I've definitely, you know, had a few, um, you know, that, that anytime they pop up like a John five, always a good guy to interview, um, things like that. So yeah, it's like somebody like that. So if you, without naming names, can you kind of describe what the worst interview you've ever had is? I think I asked you this last time, but if you can go over it again. Um, actually, I think I've had it since we talked. Um, oh band it was a band overseas they were up past midnight their time um they just didn't oh. seem to be very engaged um a lot of yes no type answers even even when they weren't really yes no questions <laughs> and it was two guests so it was like hey the both of you you know what do you think about this and one guy would answer and then stop and then i had to like push the other guy to start talking and oh no it just, I, I don't think they, they weren't, they didn't seem to be very interested. So it was very hard to get them uh, engaged. Were, were, so, were they uh, English speaking? Yeah, they were English speaking. So. Oh, okay. So like they're, they're yeah, it, it wasn't like a language barrier or anything. Okay. Okay. Because I, I've had that happening once that like I had someone, uh, I was doing a live stream and the girl, her English was worse than mine. <laughs> and like, I would ask her stuff and it was just, just blank. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> oh man. I think I know. I think I know who you're talking about too. Uh, there's two of them, but like you know, one of them. Do it. Cool. Um, so, <laughs> Josh. So, what do you do in those types of situations? Because I assume this was a live stream that you had that happen to you on. Um. Or no. You know, I, 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 I was pulling for anything I could get. That's when you start asking those really silly questions of, of, what were your influences? What made you want to pick up a guitar? You know, anything you can do to get them going. And I, I think I just cut it short. <laughs> Well, we're I, was like, I, was like, I was like all right you guys you know you guys uh you guys get to sleep yeah <laughs> so now guy do you have a follow-up on that before i go to the next subject um no i think you can go ahead cool so um now you're mainly doing twitch streams nowadays versus just a podcast format correct or am i mistaken on that uh about 50 50 50 50 okay i thought it was more swing in the other direction but okay so we've all had the issue where it's been like you're on a you're on a stream you're doing a live or whatever we've all done this and it's like only one person is sitting there we've all had that all of us have all had that I, i'm sure you've had it maybe you haven't but I, I know i've had it i know a guy has had it most people have had it what do you do in that in that kind of case to keep your momentum going when it's just like there's one person there or two are you saying there's like one person watching is that what you're watching. saying yeah. Yeah. So you're basically talking into the void and you're like, fuck. <laughs> um, I mean, with the Twitch stream, I mean, I really, I have to like look on my phone to see how many people are watching because the program we're using doesn't really show how many people yeah. are watching. And so, and, and I use the Twitch stream a little bit more as, as just an interview tool to take the interviews from later, chop them up, put them on YouTube and make a podcast out of them, things like that. So so I'm not necessarily worried about the stream, how many people are watching at the moment, because I think a lot of people are going to see it later on down the line. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously you want the chat to be, you know, moving a little bit and people being engaged and things like that. But, you know, if you can get a couple of people in there that, that, that are talking, um, you know, it, it, it's, it works itself out in the end, but yeah, there's definitely nothing more disheartening than going live on something and then, you know, seeing that one or zero or two up in the corner and you're like, all right, what's up everybody. You know, there's yeah. nobody there to be, there's nobody there to be what's up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's say that, so let's say, cause this is sort of related, but kind, kind of not. So let's say you, you do got the viewers, but the chat's not going, how do you kind of handle that? Cause I assume that's what you want on Twitch. I think that's what you want on Twitch, isn't it? The chat to be going. Uh, yeah. I mean, but once again, you know, I, I say that, that, um, 
that I, I'm still using the platform more as a recording tool. And sure. but I mean, you do, you do want some people popping in with, with, you know, I like this guest or, you know, yeah. they ask him about the time in Biloxi or something, you know, that, that type of stuff. Every once in a while, I, I, I really enjoy when the chat is going and that, and sometimes I, I will ask, like, I'll try not to get too into like silly stuff. Like, you know, what was, what was your favorite band growing up or something like that? But if the chat does it, I'll, I'll ask it because it kind of puts the onus on like, uh, if it was a dumb question, yeah. someone in the chat said it, not the, you know, it wasn't me. Yeah. It was a, hey, I, I'm just, wasn't me. don't kill the messenger. Um, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so, so yeah, you definitely want the, the, the chat moving, um, you know, but I, I do, I do enjoy, you know, if, if there's something, if, if the guest and I are having good back and forth and the chat was really not moving, but then at the end, a bunch of people jump in that were watching or listening, say, Hey, great interview. Thanks for coming on. You know, tell them we said, thanks for, for taking some time with us tonight, that type of stuff. Um, I've seen that, I've seen that too. And it's, you know, makes the end of the interview, um, I guess a little bit more rewarding. Yeah. Cause there's nothing, I don't know. I think there's nothing worse than feeling like you're talking into a void <laughs> right. and it's like, there's nobody talking. Does this mean I suck or what? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, guy, do you have any questions on that end of things? Well, it's just like a silly question, but what's the weirdest comments you you've gotten on, 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 the, on your live stream? Probably for me, probably for me. <laughs> probably for yeah. Probably. There, there's a guy that always jumps in about DC talk stuff. That's me. Um, <laughs> not so much the weird stuff on i mean it's funny because i guess with the not fest twitch people are kind of popping in and, and it's like a running thing of when is slipknot coming on are you in slipknot you know like everybody's like wondering when you know where's slipknot at and we're like we're, we're, we're not slipknot um yeah so so i mean it was it was you know just silly stuff like that people looking what time is slipknot <laughs> I, I would have I would have thought the DC talk comment would have won because you didn't know who I was the first time first time I made the comment so I was like I was hoping I was hoping well yeah. uh, hey a, a DC talk you know comment out of nowhere I can I can handle <laughs> <laughs> anyways uh, so moving right along I think we've got about another six seven minutes left so next thing um, actually I wanted to ask you about the Slipknot thing okay. how many so anybody that knows you, how many people actually think that, you know, like Corey Taylor or clown or something like that out of curiosity? Um, I mean, I, I got, when, when Corey got COVID, mm -hmm. a few people reached out to me to like, how's he doing? I'm like, I don't know how he's doing. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I think that was about the, the, you, you know, I, I, I guess I get more my friends that know I don't, speak to Corey Taylor on a daily basis, you know, kind of giving me crap about, you know, anything that happens with Slipknot. They're like, Hey, what's up with your bosses or something like that? You know? Yeah. But, um, but yeah. I mean, yeah, not too, not too much, not too bad. Fair enough. Um, as, and also out of curiosity and feel free not to answer this question if it can get you in trouble. Are you a Slipknot fan out of curiosity? Oh yeah. I love Slipknot. Like, and I literally enjoy Slipknot. Fair. Fair. I was just kind of wondering because uh, I'm always expecting a, a, a Twitch streamer on NotFest to say something like anti Slipknot. So far, I haven't heard anything. So, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, what else do we want to ask to me, Gaia? I got, I got a couple silly questions left. Do you got, what do you got? Well, I have my final question, but we're not exactly there. Okay. Um, go ahead. I'm going to think about other stuff. Cool. Okay. So now we already kind of talked about the Mount Rushmore of things but i got one when i got one more thing for you because you used to play in a new metal band so i want to hear the mount rushmore of new metal from mr toomey who was an icon in new metal. Well, we're going to say you were in new metal yeah icon of new metal over here uh this is a new legend we, we've now transformed history it's been revised you are now the jonathan davis of the 90s hmm. well he was but you know what i mean <laughs> and jonathan um i'm gonna go mount rushmore of new metal being corn limp biscuit 
albums. You got to give albums, dude. Oh, I thought you were going bands. Um, no, no, albums, dude. All right, we'll go. Corn debut album. Uh, Limp Biscuit. Man. And which is funny because I, I said on my other, it was uh, my favorite is Significant Other, but I think we're going to go Mount Rushmore. I got to go $3 Bill Y'all. Whoa. Okay. Um, Deaf Tones, White Pony. Okay. Um, and System of a Down Toxicity. Fair. Now, uh, final question on the new metal thing, since we got to bring it up. So, why do you think new metal gets a bad rep sometimes? Um, I, I think most most genres of metal that become popular tend to get frowned upon by uh, people that are way into metal, <laughs> that are like metal purists or whatnot. Um, I mean, it, you know, it was definitely a silly period and had the the funny clothes and. You know the 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 uh, you know a lot of tribal tattoos and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean it definitely had its fashion that was a little silly. Um, so and then you add, it's not very technical of music, to uh, you know rapping and you know white boys rapping and everything else over it. So it it, it definitely had its punching bag moments. Yeah. Uh, but you know it was a fun time. I mean I had a great time listening to it, going to concerts and things like that. So, it definitely was fun. Fair enough. So, Gaia, what, do you got any more questions on new metal before wrapping up? Well, I was just thinking, I, I feel like a lot of people actually like new metal, but they just don't want to say it out loud. <laughs> They're just right. like, yeah, yeah, you hear a lot of people like pitching about Limp Biscuit, but they know most of the lyrics. So I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, as an aside, just as an aside, since we're talking about this, also another thing that I noticed, Toomey's probably going to hate me for saying this, but I'm, I'm not really comparing new metal to this, but I sort of am. Um, same thing happens with Nickelback. People always claim that they hate Nickelback. It's yeah. true, but they all know the songs every but, fucking time. But they play nonstop on the radio. But people always know the songs and you, they, you, you, you'll you catch them. They're going to be humming How I Remind You when they're sitting in the mall or something and it's playing, right? So what are your thoughts on that, Jimmy? Just out of curiosity. Um, I mean, I'll kind of piggyback on this i was actually having this talk the other day about how i'm getting really annoyed by people that constantly have the same like least favorite bands like oh man i hate nickelback or i hate insane clown posse or i hate creed you know it's like like all right i get it but like come up with something a little bit more original yep like be be controversial in your hate most hated band of all time what, what, what's what's yours out of curiosity disturbed oh jesus yeah <laughs> I, 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 saw that, I, I saw them live in 2009 i think 2010 and it, because I, I went to heavy montreal and it was the most boring performance that i ever seen in my entire life they were really? so low energy it was so bad and i mean like the writing is bad to begin with but like live i was just like jesus Thank God I didn't pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's bad when you when you're happy you didn't pay for that. Uh, is disturbed really it, Josh? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were gonna give me something controversial here. It was like, hey, I mean, hey, of of all of the bands, I mean, I, I don't see. I'm trying to think if there's something else that's more controversial. Um, it's pretty widely hated. That's why I was. That's why I was hoping for something else from you. Uh, you don't got one. Got one. It's cool. No, I think I'm. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't really have another one off the top of my head. Cool. Chris Curtis. Oh. Um, my absolutely worst hated band. Oh man, um, I got in trouble for saying this last year, so I'm not sure if I really want to repeat this. I had a tweet about this, and I lost. I'm not joking. Fifty followers after I said this. <laughs> Who was it? Do you really? Do you really want to know? If I lose <laughs> followers, if I lose followers, you guys are both in deep shit. But I lost. I'm not joking. It was like 50, 60 followers. Can Josh guess ready? it? No, I was, I was, un, I was getting ready to unfollow you. Oh, you're getting ready to unfollow me. Liturgy. <laughs> who? Liturgy. Oh, I don't even know who they are. I was about Liturgy. to say it's like 
you don't know who Lydia is. They're, they're like a hipster black metal band that are really popular. Oh. And I lost, I'm not joking, like 50 or 60 followers from for saying I hate liturgy. Jesus. But I tweeted four times on the release you don't day. Need those followers anyway. Apparently not, but I gained like another Minus thousand theater. in a month. <laughs> it, it was just like these people who like liturgy just fucking love liturgy. So if anybody's listening to this and you love liturgy, I am sorry. Not my thing. They sound like squealing. I don't know, but I'm probably going to lose followers now. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. You're welcome. So, Gaia, you got a final question? Can I have my final, final question? Final, final question. Yes, awesome. Okay, so this is a very, very serious and important question. Okay, are you ready? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite yeah. dinosaur? Um, my favorite dinosaur is... Um, my favorite dinosaur to say is the Pachycephalosaurus. Um, am I, uh, uh, I, I think my favorite dinosaur is the Ankylosaurus. Oh, those are cool. I, I, those are cool looking. Yeah. Um, my son went through like a, a, a super dinosaur phase. So like we went deep into some dinosaurs, <laughs> uh, and, you know, growing up probably Stegosaurus, but you know, the more, the more I saw what he was playing with, oh, the old Ankylosaurus. Awesome. That's a good, that's a good one. Cool. So to wrap up, thank you very much, Timmy, for coming on. Once again, we will definitely have you on uh, again in the future at some point. Um, do you have any final words to say before we wrap up? Uh, guy, I'm trying to figure out what's behind you there. Is that a harp? With but what's on the harp? Oh, it's two. Okay, there we go. It's actually three. Well, it there? I don't see the. Okay. Yeah, the pink one there. The the whatever's the brown looks like it's attached to the gold. And oh yeah then, no. okay there we go <laughs> yeah it's just harps <laughs> and you could play them no i just have them for fun <laughs> no i actually can play them <laughs> can you play them that well I can. How about that? <laughs> what? can you she play can. them well she can. no no they already <laughs> she, she can. she's bs she's bs to you she, I mean, if you have if you have three i'm sure you're pretty good if it was just i actually one, have four <laughs> Well, well, like that one is like work. she's starting a family of harps is what she's doing yeah i told everybody that the last one i got was the last one and nobody believes me <laughs> I'm just like, she, she she just keeps collecting them it, it's it's, yeah. it's i have a reason i have reasons okay well, so anything else you want to say josh before we uh, wrap up well what are the reasons <laughs> <laughs> okay <It's turned> so <laughs> He's turned it around. This is hilarious. Okay, I'm going to go very fast. Um, Pell harps, you can play most stuff because you can uh, modulate the notes with the pels. Okay. Um, so you're less limited, but it's very big, so it takes a lot of space. Um, Celtic harp, you can play most stuff. They're a little bit smaller, uh, but there is some limitation on what you can play and, and not play because when it's not tuned, uh, it's in uh, ABC. It's a C minor. Um, when you play with the lever, it's just at like half a tone. So you kind of like, you can play some stuff, but you're limited. Uh, that one is just, that was um, because it was very light. So I could bring it on, on stage with me without being too worried about it, but didn't have any levers. So it was just C minor, which kind of sucks if you're playing something in a, in a, a tone. And the last one I got actually has levers. So it's like in between that one and that one. So I can move it around six pound. I can play Walking with it, no issue, no back issue. It's not heavy and it's practical. There you go. That's why. All right. Any, any, <laughs> anything else you want to say uh, to me before? <laughs> I feel like I should wrap it up. I'm like, hey guys, thanks for taking some time with me. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks again to me for doing it. And with that, we are done. <laughs>